When a week ago Lecturer's magazine published photos of Federico de Denmark and Genevieve Casanova in Madrid, which also coincided with the state visit of Kings Felipe and Letizia, a media storm broke out, but with delayed consequences. Until then, only the cover was shown there and the storm was weathered as best they could. A very complicated situation like others through which the crown prince put his mother, Queen Margaret of Denmark. The agency that discovered the ex-husband Catano Martinez de Arujo and Mary Donaldson's husband has already said that the photos have been sold to many countries, including Denmark and Australia, where the princess is from. The moment has arrived and, for example, in the Daily Mail in the UK, where the situation is being closely monitored, they chose to accompany the following headline, Photos that shocked the Danish royal family, the knight crown prince Federico of Denmark and Mexican socialite Genevieve Casanova traveled to Madrid without his wife Princess Mary. In Denmark, the situation sparked a debate on whether the images should be published in their country and prompted various journalists specializing in social reporting and members of the royal family to speak out. However, there were media outlets that preferred to behave as if the photos did not exist, perhaps trying to establish a cordon sanitaire to protect an institution that suffers from many scandals related primarily to the private lives of the princes. Federico and Joaquin A debate between journalists Yes, the journalist Birgit Borb de Berlings did it in the television program Perseligen on TV2 News, when there is a story that has the potential to affect the royal house as an institution, that is, to affect the relationship between the Danes and the royal house, we cover it, he said on the issue, which seems to have divided public opinion. We shouldn't hint further at adultery, because we don't know if there was any, but I think they at least show that the prince has put himself in an uncomfortable and stupid position. The images don't tell us anything about what their relationship was like or what actually happened, he concludes. If the visual material had been more candid, we might have had other considerations in approaching this issue, commented in Meta Svein, editor-in-chief of TV2 News on that meeting, which, according to Genevieve Casanova herself, was based on a strict friendship. Through his legal team, he warned that he would sue anyone who violated his right to honor the editor-in-chief of Extra Bladet, Ned Bricks makes it abundantly clear that just as the Danish media thoroughly covers any event on the official agenda of the Danish royal family, such events must also appear in the media. When there is a slightly critical story, all media except BT and Extra Bladet are silent. A very forced family look. And Meta Swain of TV2 defends herself against these accusations, saying that the channel not only covers media information about the royal family on favorable occasions, but also pays a lot of attention to difficult moments for them, we also engage in critical journalism about the real house. A recent example is the open confrontation between Prince Joachim and Queen Margaret over the stripping of their titles, which is the most obvious crisis that has occurred in the royal house in recent years. Meanwhile, Prince Christian, who has come of age, attended his first council of state in the presence of his grandmother, Queen Margaret, and his parents, Frederick and Mary, this second was not on the agenda, to give a sense of unity at this delicate moment. The Danish royal house published a video showing their arrival and Federico placing a chair for his mother with an affectionate gesture. The queen, used to dealing with more difficult situations, smiles her best smile. Is the procession going in? Margaret of Denmark was not destined to rule but after a change in Danish laws, she became the oldest queen in her country. The young princess Margaret of Denmark was not destined to rule because, according to the Danish law that determined the day of her birth, only men could do so. Margaret Alexandrina Thorhildur Ingrid Oldenburg was born on April 16, 1940, at Amalienborg Palace in Copenhagen. Nazi troops had invaded the country the week before, and Margaret's arrival was a ray of hope in a frightened country. She was baptized on May 14 at Hallmans Kirk. Her father was King Frederick IX and her mother was Queen Ingrid, born Princess of Sweden. He had two younger sisters with whom he had a deep bond, Princess Benedicta and Princess Anna Maria, the future Queen of Greece. The heir to the throne was Prince Nud, the king's younger brother. But the princess's fate changed in 1953, when she was 13, the constitution was amended to allow women to ascend to the throne in the absence of male heirs. 
The succession law was amended in 2009 when full equality of access to the throne was introduced. This means that the eldest child of a monarch, regardless of gender, inherits the throne. Today Margaret, who came to the throne in 1972 after the death of her father, has become the oldest queen of her country. On January 14, 2022, he celebrated 50 years on the throne. Queen Margaret demonstrated her independence and dignity from a young age. Margaret began his apprenticeship to the queen as a teenager. He first studied at the palace but then went through several schools and graduated from high school in 1959 before studying political science at several European universities. He spent 12 months at the University of Copenhagen and then studied archaeology at Cambridge for a year. Finally, he enrolled at Denmark's prestigious Aarhus University and went on to the Sorbonne, completing his studies at the London School of Economics in 1965. Marguerite was an active and independent young woman, very interested in art and philosophy, painting, writing and dancing. It was to be expected that their marriage was for love. I could never imagine getting married and not being madly in love, she said. The chosen one was French aristocrat and diplomat Henri de la Borde de Montpisa. They met in London for dinner. The sky just exploded, Marguerite would later comment. The couple married on June 10, 1967, and had two sons, Crown Prince Frederick, born in 1968, and Prince Joachim, born in 1969. However, their marriage was not particularly peaceful. Henri was a man of complex character who did not accept the fact that he was the queen's consort, which made him always follow her. The couple lived apart on several occasions. Henri left Denmark without notice and took refuge in his chateau at Caixa in France, where he took care of his vineyards. Despite everything, Marguerite admitted that they loved each other very much. After the death of her father, Frederick IX, in 1972, Margaret excitedly greeted the crowd gathered at Amelienborg Palace. She became the first queen of Denmark in five centuries. More than five decades have passed since that day, and the monarch's popularity has only grown. He attends weekly meetings with the government and writes his speeches, she is also a talented artist. Under the pseudonym Ingehild Gratmer, he does illustrations for the Danish edition of The Lord of the Rings, among others. She is also an expert in embroidery and textiles for churches and painting, as well as a translator and stage designer. His most recent work was the costumes for the Netflix movie Erengard, The Art of Seduction by acclaimed Danish director Billy August, based on a story by Karen Blixen. It premiered in September. Queen has designed 51 dresses and 81 costume designs. She is also a respected artist and her work has been exhibited since 1988. The Danish royal family is, almost, divided in its decisions. Despite her liberal nature, it took Margaret several years to accept the young Australian lawyer Mary Donaldson as the wife of the heir Frederick. She was finally welcomed into the family and the wedding took place on May 14. 2004. Her eldest grandson, Prince Christian, has just turned 18, so the line of succession is assured. Until recently, everything went smoothly in the Danish court. But Margaret's character did not stop at difficult decisions, and it was Margaret herself who revolutionized the court to coincide with her 50th year on the throne. In September 2022, he announced that he was stripping the titles of princes from his grandchildren Felix, Nicholas, Enrique and Athena, the children of his youngest son Joachim and his two wives, Alexandra Manley and Marie Cavalier. This decision caused an earthquake within the royal family that has not yet subsided. Margaret explained that she wanted to rationalize the monarchy. But he received enormous anger from his son, daughters-in-law and grandchildren. Nicholas, 23, has publicly expressed his frustration, we have been affected by this decision and the speed with which it was made. I don't understand why it has to be like this. But the Queen explained that it was an inevitable decision and that she wanted to prevent her son Frederick being forced to do it later. That later has no date. In her 83 years, Margaret does not seem inclined to abdicate. She still wears her spectacular princess gowns, 
wide-brimmed hats and extensive collection of impressive jewelry. And he made another decision that coincided with the complicated back surgery he underwent last winter, to quit smoking. But he still defies convention and shows off his unique personality.